Hi, Lisa Cole from Less Stuff and Less Waste here. I'm going to show you a really easy way to do some patchwork on the machine, although you could do this by hand if you wanted to. So to start off with, we need a piece of material that is the same size as the cushion that we want to cover, but plus a bit on the ends. So plus a bit, maybe the width of your thumb, so two centimetres or a centimetre and a half, plus add that to the width so that you have a seam allowance to stitch to. So that's our backing. You also need two bits of material that are the same width but just a little bit longer because what they're going to do is form the opening so that we can get our stuffing into the cushion. So we're going to put those to the side in a bit. I'll write a blog post about this with measurements on to help you. There's our backing down there. What we're going to do is we're going to take bits of material and we're going to stitch it to the backing but we're going to do it in such a way that you won't have any um, any rough edges so and it's really neat and easy to do. Let's talk about fabric first. So I like to use cotton because with a decent cotton if you go to make an edge on it look at that look how beautifully sharp that is that's because that's 100% cotton. If I try and do that with polyester I think this has got some polyester in it it's just not as it's a bit bouncier. It's not as um, it's not as firm. So you don't ever get such a neat result with poly cotton or polyester that you do with cotton. Also, cotton's a whole lot better for the environment after it's made, especially if you're reusing it. Now let's make a start. I've got all this fabric, and it doesn't mean that I need to use all this fabric. Let's have a think about how it's going to look before I plow on in there. Um, even if you were trying to do something random the chances are that you will start to impose some sort of design decision on it. So, for example, if you're eating a piece of cheesecake, um, you're going to strategically place your fork in and take out bits of it at a time, aren't you? You're not just going to sort of plough in there and, and eat all of it without thinking about it. That is a design decision, and um, we make them all the time. So I'm going to sort my fabrics out into, into types, just based on their colours. And I have this stuff. So how am I going to place this so it looks well together? I've got a load of blues. That's kind of brown. I'm not convinced that that goes as well with all of this. I think those look the best together. But I don't know that I'd want to see those next to each other. Although I quite like that next to it. Next to, yeah, that's not so bad. That's quite quirky. So if this leaves you completely confused and you don't know what you like and you don't know what you feel like take a photo of it and look at it in black and white and then think tonally so that blue and that grey are very similar and if I took a picture in black and white they're likely to look the same so if I wanted to make things smooth and gradual and start to flow into each other I might start to think about the tones that they are like that can you see what's happening and then maybe the last darker one if I wanted something that had a bit more contrast, I might get a pale thing next to a dark thing. So have a little bit of a plan about how you want to do this first. And, and my plan is I'm going to do a pale thing then... No, I'm going to do a pattern thing then a plain thing. That's what I'm going to do. So starting in one corner, I'm just going to put that down there. I'm going to pop a couple of pins in. Put your pins in sideways like that because then you can stitch over them. Then I'm going to try and pull the sewing machine over, so I may not the camera over. Give me a sec. There we go. Right, let me give you a little note about the sewing machine. Can you see it's got little teeth in here? Those little teeth mean that you do not need to be pulling your fabric, because if you're pulling your fabric, it's kind of like someone, um, I don't know, pulling a car along. It's already trying to do its thing. You don't need to be helping it any by pulling it. And in fact, if you do pull the fabric as you sew, you're going to make it worse because you're going to, it's likely to stip, skip stitches and do all sorts of randomness. So just let the machine work as it wants to work. So I'm going to start off. I'm on a straight stitch. I'm going to start off using the width of my foot like this as my guide. So I'm just going to take that one out for the minute because that was just holding it in place. Don't need to do forwards or backwards. I'm just going to go all the way down. End with my needle in, lift the foot up, and 
then do the same that way. So can you see, I'm not pulling it. I don't need to. I don't even need my hands. But I'm using my hands to help me get a straight line here. And with the needle down, turn it round. I'm going to do that all the way round. So down to here. I can take this pin out now. And can you see if it was facing that way, it would have been more difficult. So I can take it out. Pop it in my pincushion. End with the needle down. And then I'm just going to do the last bit. So I don't need to do, I don't need to, um, don't need to finish the stitches off or anything. I don't need to do any forwards or backwardsing. All I've done is I've just attached that first piece onto here. Let's get the machine out of the way a minute. So the next thing we need to do is to choose another colour and I'm going to go for this blue. If I can take one of them, there's a little stack of them. And I'm going to put it... Sorry, running out of space. I'm going to put it on my material upside down like that. Can you see what I've done? And I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew it. This will become more apparent when I've done it. I'm just going to sew it all the way down like that. Right to the end. So that was where we started and underneath that is my little square of the check stuff. I've put this on and I'm going to fold it out. Can you see what's happened? I've made a lovely, nice, neat seam here. That's the start of it. So this is raw and this is raw. I want to neaten up this edge next. So I'm going to do the same again with a piece of, piece of the same fabric, I think. And I'm just going to pop it like that and sew that down. See, normally you won't be having to move your sewing machine back and forth so a camera can see it. And again, I'm using this foot width as my guide. And I'm just going straight across like that. No need to neaten off or anything because all those stitches are going to be tied in by other stitches. So what have we got now? We have got that going on. So the next thing I want to do is put a different colour in. I'm going to go for one of these long bits. Let's see if I've got one that's a little less long. It's quite long. And I'm going to put that one here. Now, if you're worried about it, you can pin it. If you think it's, if you think things are going to start moving along, you can pin it. When you start out doing these, try and choose material that is kind of cotton shirt weight or sheet weight. You can do it with furnishing fabrics, but your machine is going to have to work harder. So when you're just trying them out, when you're just practicing, when you're prototyping, have a go first. Can you see what I'm up to there? Have a go first with something that's quite lightweight. Not flimsy lightweight, something that holds a crease like I showed you. Now, brave people just sew straight over the pins, but um, I don't want to be changing a needle on camera and I don't want to edit the video. I want to do it in one shoot. So we're not going to be doing that. There we go, there we go. There we go. Now I've got quite a lot of overhang on here see how it's working out. We fold that out. It's quite magical when you can fold them out. So can you see what is happening here? I've started to actually patchwork. Now I'm using nice big bits but there's no reason why you need to use big bits. You could use little bits if you wanted to. I'm going to pin this down so it is secure. That. then I'm going to trim off this bottom bit and I'm going to trim it off where my fabric scissors they vanished oh well 
there they are. My fabric scissors, for those of you who haven't seen me do videos before, say no on them because they are only for fabric. So that big no is to remind people that they're not for anything else because anything else will blunt them. That's why they sound like this, all beautiful and sharp. So I've just neatened that edge off like that and I'm going to think about my next colour, which I think will be... Should we have a bit of check? Yeah, I like the way that looks. So I'm going to put this piece of check on. Now, can you see that this is cut on quite an angle, but that's not so much of an angle. So I'm going to choose the not so much of an angle to sew on. There's no reason, actually, I'm going to do it like that. There's no reason why you shouldn't have diagonals or lines or anything like that. Let me show you what that will look like. All you're doing is you are sealing in one piece of material with the seam from the next. You can't see my machine, sorry. Here we go. Da, da, da. And then off the edge. So if you were to do angles, you could get a lovely kind of starbursty effect. Let's see if we've got all this in. There we go. There's another bit there. So I've got the edge bit missing. So I'm going to start tying it back in with the first original colour now if I've got a long bit of blue somewhere. I've got a short bit of blue so have I got a long bit of spotty stuff? Yeah let's put a long bit of spotty stuff on there. Spotty. Can't tell what it's called for looking at it. It's uh, checked isn't it? Gingham actually. So can you see, I'm not pushing, I'm not, all I'm doing is feeding it in with my hand. And I didn't bother to use any pins this time, because it's, it's really not going anywhere. It's not a big piece of stuff. There. Now I need to address this top edge here, and I need to do that with a nice long bit of material. Let me see what I've got left. The cats are going loopy because they want to go out and eat all the birds and I'm not letting them. So you might hear some manowling. That's uh, Scumspawn complaining bitterly that he can't get out and eat birds. So all set up and we go. Trundle, 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 trundle. Trundle, 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 and just make sure that this is kind of secure. There's my camera being knocked over, sorry. I do not have a professional studio set up for filming. I'm just a ordinary person in an ordinary house uh, fighting against cats and stuff. So what could I put on this last bit? It would be nice to have a little bit more seersucker. I mean, what's this stuff called? Gingham in here. So what I'm going to do is seal off that edge. I'm going to go upside down on the material now so that I can see what I'm doing. Trundly, 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 trundly. If you get little pleats in the fabric, if you get little kind of wriggles like this, that doesn't really matter. No one's going to see the back of this. It's the other bit that you need to, it's the front bit that you need to be worrying about more. Oh, there we go. So that means that I can then, making sure there's nothing underneath, I can cut off these bits and use them again. So we're nearly done. So that's a good edge, that's a good edge. Let's get that out of the way. I've got some weirdness going on here. We've got one tiny bit to do, which is this long edge here. Now, did I cut off enough of that check? <coughs> Excuse me. I might have just, but I need to... Um, just even that up. Mm. 
So fingers crossed that this is just enough to finish off my cushion. And then we're nearly done. So that's on top of there. So I've done this very, I've done these very straight. Um, you don't want to be trying to attempt a curve line because that's just going to end in tears. It's going to include loads of puckering. You might want to include some textural differences. So if you were doing this in furnishing fabrics, it would be interesting to see what it was like with a bit of velvet next to a bit of brocade, for example. Uh, you can really mess around with this and have fun. So that's the last bit of it. Now I'm going to clear out all the fabric that's in the way so we can see a little bit more clearly what we've got going on. That is the final finished cushion. What I need to do now is go around the edges like I did on these ones so that I can trim off safely and then I'm just going to pop the back on and we're done. So my um, camera is telling me that I don't have any minutes left so we're going to speed through this and do it as quick as we can. Maybe put the foot on the machine down first, shall we say? Right, we've got some gathering going on. What's happening? Run out of bobbin! Run out of bobbin! It's okay, because I've got another one in here. Super speedy bobbin change. Nothing like working against the pressures of the clock, is there? So I'm not too fussed about what colours I'm using because you're not going to see them. But as long as your machine is um, stitching correctly, I don't know, as long as your machine is stitching correctly, you are not going to see those stitches at all. My machine's a little bit wobbly, not because of the machine, but because I'm working on a very old Victorian table, which in itself is a little bit wobbly. So that's one edge. Have we got another one to do? The other one is fine, I think. So let's get this out of the way. So on the back of it, I can just trim off these little bits you can see. If you're not reaching over a camera, this is a lot easier. And then that last bit there. Then we need to make the other bit. So there's the front of your cushion. Got a little bit of a fold going on there, but I think I can catch that in, it'll be all right. I have chosen to use the selvage here as my end. So that is going in the middle. If I've used the selvage, it means I don't need to do any neatening at all. Um, if I haven't got a selvage, then what I would need to do is um, make a little hem, just fold it over. So I'm going to pop a couple of pins in. That edge was a little bit bumpy, so I'm just going to squish it down while I pop the pins in. Now, do you remember we used the width of the foot when we were sewing? No, I don't want any of those edge stitches to be showing, so I'm going to, when I sew around it, I'm going to use another guide on the sewing machine to help me get an even distribution of stitches. So let's hope that's enough pins. You can see my machine. Doesn't matter where you start, you're, all you're going to do is go round in a circle. Square, rather. So there are lines here. I'm going to go to about 1.5, which, remember, was your thumb? That was your um, seam allowance in the beginning. So we measured our cushion, and then we... I've done this upside down, doesn't matter. We measured our cushion, and then... We added our thumb width seam allowance, which is what we're stitching on now. I'm going to take that out. Needle down. Always put the needle down when you turn a corner because that gives you a nice neat corner. If your needle's up in the air, you've got nothing to pivot. Against. Oh dear, nearly done. We are so nearly done. Pin out. Again, don't 
don't worry about any wrinkles. We've got two steps up to do. One is to um, just trim those corners off so that they turn neatly. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then we've got to turn it the right way out. What's happening is that the actual cushion that I'm making is knocking the camera tripod over. <laughs> We're on the home run. It's nice kind of having the last run of stitches to do. And then this should just meet up with the stitches you had originally. And I haven't, oh dear, what's happened there? I haven't bothered to, um, what's it done? I haven't bothered to double stitch or back stitch or anything like that. It's all fine. Right, we're done with the sewing machine. What we're going to do now is just trim these corners off. So if I was to fold all that in, it's going to end up with a big uh, sort of clunky mess. So what I'm doing, to stop myself from snipping too close, I put my thumb over the edge like that. And I'm snipping once and twice. If you've got lots of layers, get in there and make one of the layers a little bit short, shorter, like that. You do that on all four corners. So thumb over the stitches so you can't go too close. Snip. Snip. There's nothing quite as annoying as cutting the corner off by, by mistake. Thumb over the edge. Thumb over the edge, snip, snip. Now we can turn it around the right way. When you come to a corner like this, get your scissors in there or something and fold out with the scissors. What you don't want to be doing is ramming into that corner because that's going to just make it all lumpy. So what I'm doing inside is that movement with my needle, with my scissors. Can you see? And that gives me a beautifully neat, I'm just nudging it into shape there. I'll do the other ones. And then afterwards, I'll pull the camera back, <coughs> excuse me, so you can see the whole thing a lot more clearly. So imagine I've pulled out all those needles. That is our cushion cover. So that's the front of it and that's the back of it with the scraps on it and this is where the cushion pack goes in. That's it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Do remember to have a little think about how you place your fabrics because um, you know, there is, there's so much you can do with this. If you don't like what you've done, you can unpick it and do it again. Uh, there's an awful lot you can do with these. These don't have to be so big. You could do nice, neat little strips. You could do a whole load of strips going across. You could do them going diagonally. You can do whatever you want. If you do make a cushion, please let me know. I'd love to see it. That's it from me. Bye.